Hello everyone and welcome back to this month's Beyond the Board episode. Today we are going to be talking about Sonic Adventure 2 and I have not only one but two guests with me. Please feel free to introduce yourself. I am Seafood, I am on the event committee for Sonic Adventure 2 as well as overall kind of dipping into the other Adventure Air games and we've been putting on the Bingo League for the last two and a half months. I'm Tommy, or if this nickname is already taken on the website, you can probably find me as Tommy Easy. Uh, I started speedrunning SA2 in November 2015. That's, oh, it's been a while. And in our context, I guess I was the main developer of uh, bingo boards for Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. And, well, there's so much to say about that. What's your favorite aspect of SA2? And why? It's the hunting for sure. I never thought I'd get into speed running specifically. But like I never really looked it up in games or anything. And like anytime I saw speed challenges in video games for like a completion point or anything, I was just like, I never did them. And then it was just like, I was watching treasure hunting, I was watching Deku do it fast. I was like, this actually looks fun. It's like a little sandbox you can play in and a lot of times I'm just doing the hunting without the timer. <laughs> That's why I like hunting the most out of everything in Sonic Adventure 2. Bingo's pretty cool for similar reasons with, uh, you know, you get a different board every time and you gotta just kind of vibe with what you get and do it as best as you can, which is like the hunting mantra. <laughs> Well, I would generally agree with hunting. I just don't know, but I have a feeling that your best character gonna be the character that you probably enjoy playing the most. And hunting had kind of a funny aspect where you can just straight up learn the path of how like to do stuff, but you need to react differently every time you play it based on the information you have. And the fact that you need to make decisions during the run, I think that's what caught my attention. And speaking about bingo, it actually has quite a long story because I was one of the players of the first bingo ever played in SA2. I kind of still remember it and even have a word of this because we had eight people so there was like two teams of four people who were doing random objectives but since we didn't have anything like bingo sync service at the time we used the uh, google spreadsheet and a generation function for it. The goals we had they weren't balanced at all like what we have now there are just a bunch of random goals that everyone can understand and some of them even involved last story which pretty much forces you to play the game for at least for half of an hour if you want to reach that so that was also fun experience like beating bio wizard and stuff and at this point, bingo also caught a lot of my attention because you're not just racing with other people from point A to point B, like in regular story, but you have to road your way in and sometimes do things you never used to do. And you're not the only one in this situation. Like We have a lot of runners who can play relatively good and consistent and like hero story for instance but they have no clue how to do certain missions from hero story because they never needed that and that creates some variance i guess between the amount of time that different teams need to spend to reach the goal and considering other things like the upgrades you might need and you can just forget getting them that also just adds more stuff and i guess in particular that's why bingo races are fun you said that you're one of the original uh, bingo creators for SA2. What inspired you to make these bingo goals back then? As I said, I already liked bingo the first time I played it, but we never had a proper service for doing so. And at some point, I met two other people who actually helped a lot with developing bingo. I wasn't totally alone. I had Melrose and M. Passant who helped me with the making original boards and contacting directly to bingo sync stuff so we were able to add different boards for the website for sonic adventure 2 battle it was originally just one normal board how we call it now that involved both stories hero and dark but 
since we're mostly designed it for teams of two people, there were requests of uh, some opportunity to play 1v1 races. This is how we eventually came to the conclusion that we added Hero and Dark Story boards separately, which you still can play as a team, but they're going to be a lot shorter. And since we got more and more interest to Bingo, we eventually added two more boards. One of them just called Long, which is a regular normal board, but it has a lot more play goals and story progressions. So races generally take more time. And several years later, I was working alone on this. It took a lot of time and a lot of testing from other community members that were willing to help me to test unusual stuff. And we also added the challenging board that we called Nightmare, which has the most absurd goals, but I still try to make them funny and, well, enjoyable once you figure out how to do that. So now we have like five boards for just this game alone. What do you think makes SA2 Bingo's fun? Like I was mentioning earlier, and Tommy was mentioning earlier, the parallels to hunting is what drew me in. Sonic Adventure 2 is like a really perfect team-based bingo game because you have one runner loading in the hero story and you have one runner loading in the dark story. So you both have your own tasks, but the downside is sometimes you might have to roll quite a few times for a board with a good balance between hero and dark goals. Otherwise, it might be very heavily hero with very few dark or very heavily dark with very few hero. And you know, that's just how the generator rolls it up. But you know, once you get that balance between hero and dark goals, like it is so cool because like, not just you doing your own dark story hero story like there's some strategies that we've been seeing in the bingo league even where you know runners will load up into the other story because there are some goals like you know defeating uh bigfoot and hotshot or Tails and eggman one but uh it's not just that like you could load in and you know if no one's done city escape or wild canyon missions for quite a while dark runner could go in and do it or vice versa that's why i think sonic Adventure 2 makes a great bingo experience because of the team aspect yeah. This game in particular has a very interesting structure. No matter who you are, you always have access to two stories. Well, we basically have three stories, but we're not going to talk about third one. It doesn't exist. There is always an option to go for either hero or dark. And if there, everyone who is racing can do both of them, you might not even predict what's going to happen first. Because, again, it's not as linear as some games. It might be also fun to play with bingo, but everyone starts from the same point and instead you can pretty much even start the same story with your teammate and just follow it for a while because that would benefit you for taking a certain goal in the early game of bingo and the fact that you can roll that much in the game I think that what kind of makes it unique in a way and it's also the reason why I try to add as many team play based goals as possible stuff like when both players need to reach a certain point of the story or you need to get some amount of rings or some amount of emblems or there might be a goal that you might finish from any story like beginner card racing emblem because there is a driving stage for both stories for hero and dark but you gotta choose at this point if you wanna sacrifice story progression and just drop for these missions for a while. Or you can keep going for story or other goals when your teammate might take this goal away. Because, well, eventually everybody will have access to this. Most people know Sonic Adventure 2 as a pretty linear game where you just go from level to level to story and so on. Can you maybe tell us more about how that affects the bingo in itself? So take like Sunshine, for example, right? That game, you could just go off, uh, pretty much do half of the worlds right off of the bat. There's a couple that require a couple of shines first, but you know, that's a very open game. Breath of the Wild is a very open game and where you can go, what you can do. But Sonic Adventure 2 does seem like a very linear structured game where you'll have a goal and there is some story based goals getting animals or finishing with a hundred plus rings and things like that in the regular story based missions but when you finish a stage 
then you can do missions two through five. We use these and throw those into the mix as well. So like once you finish City Escape, the question becomes like, do you continue opening more up for yourself later? Or do you go and get City Escape M2 right now? It's not that long of a goal, but like, is it worth going for right now? And like the later the missions are in the stage, if, if it's for City Escape M5, that is a huge commitment because you have to get through mission two, mission three, mission four, and then you can do mission five. And by that point, your opponent is probably in uh, shadow one by this point or something. I'm not entirely sure, but those are the questions you have to think about with regards to story progress. I would agree that uh, C2 is a linear game only to a certain extent, especially if you just do regular speedrun, one of the two most common categories, which would be either hero story or dark story. And even in that case, it's still not linear for one of the third of the game, which would be hunting because, well, again, hunting would be different, pretty much guaranteed every time you play it. But if you mix this game with bingo, it's almost never linear because the amount of goals that would let you take them just during story progress is quite low compared to the total amount, which makes a routing difference. There is a lot of routing in SA2. You can simply play better than your opponents, but take bad routing. And because of this routing, you can lose the match. And Bingo in particular also led to creating a bunch of exclusive flips and strategies that literally never been used before because there never was a reason. <laughs> the greatest example probably would be taking the upgrade on hidden base in Hero Story because you normally cannot do that if you play this casually. But there is a certain clip which you can do during bingo, go out of bounds and take this upgrade. And I think the only case when it's useful is pretty much bingo. So yeah, you can take a lot of unnatural decisions just because of bingo. What would you say is the barrier of entry for people who are interested in picking up SA2 bingos? Unless you're doing nightmare bingo, which uh, that is its own can of worms. That one, the barrier of entry is learning a lot about the game's tech and layouts and everything. But, you know, as far as, you know, normal bingo hero and dark bingo and long bingo, those ones, the barrier of entry isn't really that high. Like, I'm pretty sure anyone can pick these up. Like, y'all, you have to know where the animals are. You have to know the point values you're going to need for the A ranks and the B ranks. But, you know, outside of that, if you want to go against other people in bingo, like, Barrier of entry is probably, you know, be competent at the game, you know, have somewhat of an understanding of how the movement and everything works, but like literally anyone could pick up SA2 Bingo and do a blackout if they wanted to. It's not going to take that long. Specifically for the Bingo League, uh, we set the uh, entry requirement being uh, having a hero or dark run that uh, met threshold because we didn't want anyone to pair up or get paired up with someone that doesn't have the speedrunning prowess to be able to do these goals fast enough. But, you know, as far as outside of that, yeah, as anyone can really pick up SA2 Bingo. It's easy, it's, you know, all these goals are very well doable. As a Bingo developer, uh, I had one of the goals that would make sure that every single goal would be accessible for player of any skill. Like, even if you're just playing the game casually. I'm pretty sure for as long as you don't touch the Nightmare board, you can beat pretty much any goal you will encounter on this board. I didn't want to force players to learn specific skips or tricks that they would not get the natural way in order to simply obtain a goal for a normal bingo or any other bingo except, again, Nightmare. Now we've talked about the Bingo League so far. Would you like to explain what even is this mysterious Bingo League? There were quite a number of people in the Sonic Adventure 2 speedrunning community that wanted some kind of bingo event, a bingo league, a bingo tournament, anything. They just wanted something. And a lot of people were also asking for a hero story tournament and a dark story tournament and a hunting tournament and a lot of things. Meanwhile, we're also dealing with uh, our fun little timing question of how we want to Sonic Adventure 2 to be loadless. 
So, while they're still dealing with that question, the mods decide to get an event committee together. Here comes me, and I'm like, all right, it's time. Bingo League. So, we get Hero and Dark Runners in there right, right away, being able to go and lock out. And we got 11 teams, and they've had since the beginning of February to the end of April to get all their matches in. Three months of schedule whenever you can has worked out really well, I think. And that has been our bingo league experience. What is the process for organizing such a tournament? And what have you realized to be the most challenging aspect of this organization? All right. So process was we took what we've learned from doing Hero Story and Dark Story tournament, right? and use that to make the bingo league organization a bit better one of the things i immediately knew was that unless i had a machine that was capable of restreaming bingo because this is four streams that you're restreaming and not everyone was not all of our restreamers were able to even just do two streams for the races so that was one of the first things that I was thinking about. It's like, we need a machine that can bring in four streams, also have Discord going, and then have OBS up and screen sharing OBS through Discord so the commentators can commentate on the match and be in sync with uh, what's going on. And then being able to stream that and having it all work smoothly without seeing the color blue show up like at all. Blue Hedgehog's fine. The blue screen, oh, don't want to see that. <laughs> Outside of that, what have I learned from this? Well, we're going to put out a questionnaire after the league is over to all the runners and then to anyone who helped out or anyone who's been watching to see what everyone's thoughts are because some runners have been uh, feeling a little tired after a couple months of this. I'm not sure if like a three month time frame was too long or if the league format just wasn't for them specifically i don't know we're just trying to make events that like the runners actually want to do and back to the first part things we learned from here when dark story tournament that we're starting to that we've had to employ a little bit coming to the end of the league here is sparking the conversation about scheduling because not every runner well they all are ready to schedule they don't always speak out to the other teams so sometimes we got to get that ball rolling and this is something we learned during hero story and dark story and once again during the bingo league some people are better with responding rather than taking the initiative to ask others themselves do you have any advice for anyone interested in making a bingo tournament for their own community shout out to the bingo thon folks they are quite the uh, small little army they come in, they've been more helpful than you can realize. I mean, you realize, you are the help. <laughs> <laughs> to the people listening to this, the Bingothon folks are very helpful, and they love bingo, they will probably say yes. I can confirm that we will probably say yes. <laughs> Before we go, any final words that you'd like to share? Or a 66 is very based. I am guessing that there are no other final words, which leads me to say shout outs to both Seafood and Tommy for coming on and talking about Sonic Adventure 2 Bingo. Go make sure to follow them both. Uh, links are down in the YouTube description. And yeah, if you want to be featured in your own Beyond the Board for your own game, then do join our Discord and either message me or Pikastroff. And we will see us again in next month's Beyond the Board. This was Loa. Bye.